The best part of South Park, when it works the best, is when the kids have a reality that they believe. You know what I mean? And so that's what this game is. It's like, the, the, there's a snow day. The kids are like, hell yeah, we get to go play. No! Um, no, they're not. They're only mostly dead. I guess first question is, uh, where did this idea come from? I mean, we, we came off of like the Fractured Butthole and we wanted to do something. We definitely wanted to do another video game, but we wanted to do something different. And I think we started from a place of, you know, narrative. The narrative, I mean, those games are great and we're super proud of them, but the narrative part of it became kind of like, as games become more like updatable and like you can actually update characters and update missions and all that stuff. But we always thought we wanted to do that thing where like, hey, we, you know, we do a thing in a show and then like it's in the game two weeks later or three weeks later, whatever it is. And with the with the way that Fractured and those um, the Stick of Truth, it just it's hard to do. Yeah. So that's how we started it. And then uh, I don't know, I don't know, Patches Jordan and came to us with the idea of Snow Day, literally using the idea of snow as like the the stuff of the game that's going to make the levels and stuff. And I guess like we we glommed onto that immediately. Cow, Cartman, who are these assholes? They're my secret army. We're attacking you before you attack us. What are you talking about? My spies saw your army gearing up for battle. Your spies? They have this entire, like they just, every single day they just bust it out. They have this whole entire world and galaxy and you know, it's a lot of their same characters from Stick of Truth and the, yeah. the Dungeons and Dragons kind of theme stuff. And then in class, you know, we try to make it kind of like an, a long episode of South Park narratively where maybe there's actually is a real threat and that emerges, but the, the, it starts with just the kids are playing a game. Mm -hmm. And whenever we start there, that's like, the best. That's the secret of Subbert. That's like the best stuff. It was interesting when you were talking about basically the idea of that this is a world that exists that can be like added on to. Like, so like, you know, when you start the game, it, is it a complete experience? And then, but, and then how do you work in the idea of adding new things? Is these, are these as ideas as they come along or, or is this tying into the show? They, there's a few ideas along the way that we've kind of peeled off and said, okay, we're going to make that like DLC after the fact that seemed to make sense. I think we found, tried to find a scale, which is like, uh, you know, like frankly, like this game as a $29.99 game, that seemed like the right size for us to try 3D for the first time, make it work, make all those systems work without fighting off too much and failing at it, frankly. You know what I mean? So I think we, uh, the team that we worked with, the, the guys at Question and ourselves, we felt like, yeah, that's doable. We also like we go in, we get everyone working on all this stuff, and then we just take stuff out. Streamline, 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 streamline. So the, just the core bit is really good. Then we'll put stuff back in, but we got to just focus on what works about the game. I think it's great. You know, the 3D of it is is again, I it's just seamless for me. They look like South South Park characters. It, what uh, like what games have you played, or like were you playing that like inspired this, or were you like, hey, I, I want you know, I like the feel of this in particular. This is something I want to bring over. I mean, you guys should answer that too. We were playing Hades and like we were playing like a lot yeah, of another different. Another roguelike game. Yeah, and I mean, not to like, I think that the, you know, there's so many great genres of games and like the two the two guys we have to get interested in this is me and Trey. <laughs> like Trey and I have totally different tastes in games where I could just play a fight game all the time. Like I'm fine like with that. I like, I like strategy games a little bit. I like big Far Cry kind of games. Well, you said you're, you're as different than Trey. What is Trey? Trey's like in to... RPGs and Dungeons and Dragons and real strategy games. He's a total board game freak. He loves board games and and those kind of more cerebral and rules based things. And again, I don't at all. Like co op communal yeah. games that are community experiences. Because especially after uh, COVID, like a lot of my gaming revolved around just me hanging out with my friends and being able to play with them. And like, the last two South Park games are amazing, and I love RPG games, but it's great to be able to have a game, a South Park game that I can play with them, because we're all huge gamers, we're all big South Park fans. We just decided to do something that was like a little, a little different than what we had done. We wanted to just do something that was a little more playful and playable, and you could play with your friends. So, what lessons did you take from those last games that you applied to this game? Oh, games are so hard to make. I, yeah. <laughs> it is such a humbling experience. It really, really is. I mean, Jamil was worked on last game with this and this game. You can say it. I mean, we just, yeah, I mean, I, I had no idea a game would take, could take like six, six, seven years to make. You know, so all the all the iterating and play testing and dialogue trees. There was real trial by fire. I don't know. When I first got hired for uh, <laughs> Fractured But Whole, just... they they handed me a three hundred and fifty page script and say, okay, let's rewrite half of it. Yeah. <laughs> you don't think people get diabetes because their mom started doing childbirth, do you? I, I feel like Kuhn made that up to make Captain Diabetes feel insecure about himself. I said, really proud of those games. They're incredible. We just felt, I think, a little tapped out 
Like, okay, what are we gonna do different? You know, like we did that and we did another one and we hit all those, like all those UI jokes. Those are the best. Like, I love that stuff. Like that we kind of did those. Oh shit, what are we gonna do this time? And I think the big thing that for those games was the technology of like, finally the, the like PS4, PS5, whatever that generation you could play. It seems stupid, but you could actually make a, a, a South Park game that looked like the show. And it's just with narrative stuff and especially South Park, when we look, we want to say that or we want to make that joke. And the game became very hard to keep that in the, you know what I mean? Like it, we spent a lot of time making sure that stuff was lining up with the moral ambiguity. And that becomes kind of like, it's cool. It's super interesting. It's, it's just hard to make. Sometimes it's hard challenging to make funny. Excellent work, new kid. This is just the first of many victories in the name of Christ. And that's what we want to do. We want to make funny. So like you just run into stuff like, man, we've done that a lot. And I feel like we want to find a different way to be funny, a different way for people to go and make make funny instead of uh, just little jokes. You know what I mean? What do you want this game to convey to people? Or like, is or what do you want them to take away from it? Just from uh... I mean, this is I feel like this is like narratively it feels like it was an episode of South Park called Snow Day, and there was a beginning, middle, end, and you, there was a, and you'll see there's like a you know there's a there's a story, there's a structure. I think the other ones were probably more like movies, or closer to a movie length of, you know, day five. They were really longer chapters, a much longer experience. Um, so just in like basic terms, I think this one narratively is more like a. A, more like a show, a long show. Hey, over here! Your army won't help you, Cartman! You're gonna die today! What did you say? I said, you're gonna die today! Screw you, you're gonna die! What? I said, screw you, you're gonna... Never mind! Let's just fucking go! Whatever, let's just fucking go! That's what I said, let's fucking go! The play is very different, and there's a lot of replayability and building your character a little more in this and you have co-op and you know you're playing with your friends this isn't technically the first time south park has come to console in 3d form it's true 1998 yeah what i mean obviously that was not a game that you guys had much association with no not at all and it's also like literally i think about that's before most people were born they were gonna play this game <laughs> it's crazy that's like in the 90s uh, i can't remember then no we had very little to do with that stuff. that was just like license product. you know the show is so like off at the moment and games take so long to make and with this one you'll be able to react to things more and was it frustrating with the last couple of games that you know by the time it was people were playing it maybe like things weren't hitting the same way yeah i don't know do you think i mean kind of it's like you just can't you can't do those easy jokes because you know this is not going to be coming out for two and a half years so yeah i mean uh and you want people to come back and play this 10 years from now so you don't want to do any jokes that are too timely anyway like you know you want this game to be timeless so the jokes are more like situational and not pop culture oh thank god you did it you saved me i've been trapped in here all day i would have gotten out but there's a level three elven lock on that door over there i do want to ask one question though about snow days in particular so snow days are starting to go away as like a cultural thing now what do i what do you guys think about that like are you guys i mean pro snow day um i'm very pro snow day yeah, I think it's really sad. Remote, I mean, listen, I got, I have three kids and I suffered through remote schooling. Yeah. During the pandemic, it's like, no, man. Oh, we, ju we just had a snowstorm in New York and uh, they were like, oh no, it's not a snow day, it's yeah, remote that, learning day. That, and then the yeah. whole system goes down. <laughs> Bring them yeah, back. the whole thing did work anyway. Yeah, yeah. Back anyway. No, no, let the kids go outside. This isn't fair, Butters. You have to figure something out so I can beat Stan. I cast a spell, your health is back to 100. Get the fuck up. God, I have to do everything around here.